Good evening, good evening, good evening, folks. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you for all of you that jumped on the line tonight. I appreciate you. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, first of all, I hope everyone has a fantastic uh, afternoon today. Good evening. Shout out to Gail. Good evening. <clears throat> Moderators, if you can hear my voice clearly, put a one in the chat box. Shout out to Abdul. Thank you for jumping on the stream. <clears throat> All right. If you can hear my voice well, put a one in the chat box to moderators. Awesome. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Abdul. We're going to get right into it. Uh, we're going to talk about the subject tonight, as I promised to all of you, that I would keep you updated as to what's going on with this particular case, however short or long these streams will be with each and every update. Until we get justice, as you've heard me say, until we get justice, uh, this conversation will be had because I think, again, it's very important that we keep the subject in the ears of all of those who have ears to hear. Because all too often with most cases where it involves any one of us in our community, we know that to be true, that if we don't continue talking about it, if we don't continue having the conversation, if we don't keep it in front of people's ears, in their ears and in front of people's eyes, a lot of times these cases tend to just kind of fade away into oblivion and then they become another cold case file. What I would love to do going forward is to unravel, un un uncover and expose every closed case file because as far as we are concerned no case should be closed if no justice was had you know so like any closed case file that should be exposed and like any tragedy that we know exists today i think it's important that if we have a voice to speak we should take on the task of keeping these conversations alive and Shankola Robinson and the Robinson family and the Long family, they need to get justice where this is concerned. This is a horrible, horrible tragedy. Horrible tragedy. And uh, many, and I've heard some even say, uh, why don't we stop having this conversation? Why don't we just let the young lady rest in peace? I would love to say to those that speak silly like that, that there is no resting in peace where there's no justice. No, not at all. There's no resting in peace where there's justice. If a, if a tragedy has been taking place and if an injustice has been had, I believe there is no such thing as simply resting in peace or letting it, letting uh, sleeping dogs lie, as people like to use that term. I think it's an, I think it's absolutely necessary that the conversation continues to be had. And for those that don't want to hear it, stick your fingers in your ears because the conversation is going to continue until justice is had for Mrs. Shanquella, Bernada Robinson, and the Robinson and Long family. So here's what I want to highlight tonight in this particular stream. We're going to be talking about a particular interview that Mrs. Robinson, uh, Shanquella's mom, Mrs. Salamandra Robinson, had with Nightline. It's going to be a relatively short stream tonight. I just want to keep you guys updated with information as I find it out and as I receive it. Some of you may have heard this interview already. If so, this is simply a recap for you. But for those that have never heard the interview, you're going to find this interview pretty interesting. All right. And uh, again, I thank you for all of you that got on the, on the stream tonight. Before we begin, I want to recap a little information about Mrs. Sh uh, Shanquilla Robinson. Her name is Shanquilla, Robis Shanquilla Bernada Robinson. She was born January the 9th, 1997. She graduated from West Charlotte High School. She then went on to attend Winston-Salem uh, College 
uh, Winston-Salem State University, where I understand she graduated with honors. She did very well. She didn't stop there. After graduating from college, with, ambition, with her ambition and her entrepreneurial spirit, she went on to start a braiding company, a braiding business, where she catered specifically to young girls, and it was called Exquisite Braids. It was very successful business. I seen her work, absolutely talented young lady, no doubt. She went on then to start another business where she highlighted her own clothing line. That was called Boutiques, Exquisite Boutiques. It was an online business. She was very, very, very successful, very ambitious, ambitious, and she had a very strong work ethic. She worked so hard to become successful, and she, in fact, was becoming extremely successful at the time of her death. And like any other trip, to take off the edge from working so hard. She often traveled. She's been to Vegas. She went to Jamaica and many other different countries in her leisure. This trip to Cabo, Las, uh, Cabo, Cabo San Lucas, uh, Mexico, was no different than any other trip that she's ever done. She's always gone on trips. So this was nothing different for her. This was nothing strange for her. Again, like I said in another stream, the people, only thing that made this trip different is that she went with a group of individuals that she had not traveled on a regular basis. She had a team of young women that she traveled with regularly. This particular trip, none of those individuals was with her. And as a result, individuals who she thought she was friends with ended up being the reason for her, her demise, her untimely demise. So with this story being as polarizing as it is and sad as it is, like I said, we are going to continue having this conversation. So tonight's stream, Salamandra Robinson speaks out. She's going to discuss some things that was uh, relevant to her during the time these individuals contacted her, her up to the point when they actually returned back from Mexico to the United States and what she heard and what she experienced with their return. And we're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into it. Shout out to Margaret. Love you. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight. We're going to get right into it. Hold on one second, folks. And it's still lovely person that she was. That's all I got is our memories and this photo of my child. Those memories. These certain pictures make you cry. These portraits. Good memories. Are what Chanquilla Robinson's parents hold close to their heart. She's on my mind the first thing I wake up in the morning. The first thing I thought is in my mind is her, Chanquilla. She was a beautiful person on the outside, and she was a very beautiful person in the inside. She just had a beautiful spirit. Shanquilla's life and legacy now shaped by her final moments. A brutal beating shared on social media. A vicious death while on vacation with friends. The growing mystery surrounding the death of an American tourist. Just one day into that vacation, she turned up dead. The FBI has now opened an investigation. I'm raising awareness for Sanquilla Robinson. A horrifying story gripping the country. Cries for justice spreading online. Sanquilla needs justice. And now Mexican authorities charging an unnamed U.S. citizen with murder. One of Sanquilla's acquaintances. But still, the family left wondering what happened, who did it, and why. The further mystery of this case is that the people that she was with when she died, they let leave Mexico. I thank God for the 25 years that she were here with me, you know. But I hate to see my child leave here like that, you know. That was a terrible way for her to die. What were her hopes and dreams? Well, she always said she wanted to have a, a successful business. Yeah. You know, that's how she pretty much talked about it. And she could do anything. Yeah. Anything that she said a man to do. That drive fulfilling her other passion, travel. Miami, Vegas, Jamaica. 
And in October, she was heading to San Jose del Cabo, Mexico, a seaside escape with six others. She was very excited about it. She called me and I said, well, okay, enjoy yourself. And um, I'll call you by the time I think you've gotten there. That Friday evening, she seemed very excited about the trip, you know. And um, she said she was eating, getting ready to eat some tacos. They had a chef there. And I said, okay, love you. I will talk to you tomorrow. Enjoy yourself. And I've never spoken with my child again. Not even 24 hours after her daughter landed in paradise, Salamandra says she got a worrying call from one of the friends who told her Shanquilla wasn't feeling well. And um, I said, well, what's wrong with it? And he said, alcohol poison. I didn't know what alcohol poison was, you know. But um, he said, um, the doctor is on the way. And I said, well, how you know alcohol poison if the doctor haven't arrived yet? According to the police report, the doctor recommended that Shanquilla be taken to the hospital, but the friends allegedly refused. And I said, well, why you can't take her to the hospital? You know, take her to the hospital. And he said, well, they say you have to have cash money. I said, well, she has insurance. And uh, he said, well, she need about $5,000 to be seen in the emergency room. Soon after, another series of calls. Salamandra was told an ambulance had arrived, but it was too late. They said that she was um, responsible and the ambulance was trying to resuscitate her. He said he was sorry that Shankola had paid us. He said it just like that? Just like that. He wasn't even emotionally upset or nothing about, about it. And um, I said, well, um, you know, it was nothing I could do. It's just my heart just crumbled, you know, because I couldn't even get to my child. She's 2,000 two miles away. Local Mexican authorities later releasing the police report stating the cause of death as cardiac arrest. Salamandra says days later, the friends returned to the States after their vacation. But as the family grieved, Salamandra says she received a disturbing call. I got a call from somebody. I didn't even know who it was. And they said that they was over there fighting that girl. And that's the way they left it, just like that. So someone just called you, said that, and then hung up? And, and hung up. Said they was over there fighting. I don't know why they keep talking about alcohol poison. Salamandra telling us she confronted the friends about that call when they visited her at home in Charlotte, North Carolina. They was crying and say they never had a fight. They even sit here and say they was picking out what they was wearing to the funeral. Wow. They sit down here and we was talking about what colors we was going to wear and what we was going to do. And they sit here and say, pick out what they was wearing to the funeral. As Shanquilla's family was making plans for her funeral, they received bombshell news contradicting everything they'd been told by the so-called friends and the police report. When they called me and the autopsy came back, it all made sense. According to the death certificate from Mexico, the 25-year-old died from a severe spinal cord injury and atlas luxation, a dislocated neck. There was no mention of alcohol or cardiac arrest, and the approximate time of death was at 3 p.m., just 15 minutes after the injuries. What went through your mind when you heard that? Oh, I just couldn't believe it. You know, oh, we just got sick on the stomach. Salamandra again says she confronted one of the friends who lived nearby. They say Shanquilla didn't die from the alcohol poison. They say she had been beating her neck. He broke out on a sweat and he, he um came out of his shirt. He was sweating so bad. It's like he was eating him up. But soon, another punch in the gut. Graphic cell phone footage leaked online, appearing to show Shanquilla naked, physically assaulted by another woman, while others appeared to watch on, even encourage it. So look, can you at least fight that? All six of them had an opportunity to stop that situation. Neither one of them didn't do nothing about it. Who gave them the right to take a life? He didn't give her no kind of care, no help. I can just feel her suffering, man. The last breath she took out of her body. <laughs> It's hard, but I want the world to see it. I want everything to come out because I want justice for my child. I pray for her family and I pray for justice. That video justice. sparking demands for Robinson. answers. I'm raising awareness for Shanquilla Robinson. Thousands of people across social media posting justice for Quilla and say her name and hundreds attending her funeral in solidarity. I just thought she would be bearing me. 
Not me bearing her, man. When she came through the funeral room, and I stood over, man. And I told her, baby girl, you would not die in vain. Daddy, we'll get to the bottom of it, man. But that bottom is often a deep pit. Prosecutors in Mexico are filing charges for femicide, a form of gender-based violence. The reality is it's a homicide case. And you, it doesn't change what you investigate. It doesn't change what evidence you need to convict somebody. Mexican authorities issued an arrest warrant two weeks ago for one of the friends. The prosecutor in Mexico speaking to local news. But officials aren't releasing any names and no known arrest have been made. Investigators now seeking to extradite the person of interest to face charges in Mexico, which could take a long time. The Mexican warrant is worthless here. No sworn officer or agent has the authority to arrest anybody on a warrant from another country. So it has to be vetted through probable cause and information that the Mexican authorities provide to convert it to a U.S. warrant strictly for the purpose of arresting a person. ABC News has reached out to the so-called friends who were reportedly in Mexico with Chanquilla. They haven't responded to our request for comment. The FBI's Charlotte Field Office is also investigating the case. What for you does justice look like for Chanquilla? For them to go back to Mexico and do their 20, 30, 40 years, That's whatever right. they give them. That's right. And they need to pay for what they did to her. Next month, Chanquilla would have been celebrating her 26th birthday. The holidays now especially tough for her family. How do you want your daughter to be remembered? As the person that she was. She was loving, loved people, loved traveling. I hurt, but I also know that God don't make no mistakes. My heart going to hurt, and it's going to hurt for a while. But you know, I know God don't give me strength to get through it. Hi, everyone. Yeah.